That is cheese. I'm going to look at Gary. That is cheese. <laughs> this is cheese. This whole thing is bloody cheese. I'm up to my knees in it. <laughs> this is our cheddar gorge. Obviously, it's not as big as your gorge. The Grand Canyon is bigger, but well, it's longer and deeper and wider. Mm, but it doesn't have any cheese in it. Why can't you just leave me alone? I'm just saying, everything in America comes with cheese apart from the Grand Canyon, whereas this canyon does come with cheese and it's delicious. Here, have some. I don't want cheese. It's better than Monterey Jack in a tube. Can't You're you ruining it? this. No, you are, because you are telling everyone that the Mustang is better than the Focus. Well, it is. It isn't. It is. No, it isn't. Tank, those were given various names and they were given different names in America from the rest of the world because certain names that Honda used, like Cub and Super Cub, had already been taken by other people. And it's mainly because American lawyers are quite aggressive about pursuing that sort of thing. Whereas really they should spend more time inventing some new types of cheese. Because as we know, the Americans only really have one type of cheese, which is called cheese. They say, you want cheese with that? I said, oh, yes, what sort of cheese have you got? It's goddamn cheese, you communist, you know? What really annoys me is that you buy a Ferrari 430 and you think this is as good as Ferrari can make a car, and then a couple of minutes later they come along and go, no, actually, this is. But it's going to cost an extra £28,000. But if you give us, an, yeah, give us another £28,000, you'll have a car that's as good as we can actually make it. Exactly right. I think it's a bit like that Sainsbury's Taste the Difference cheese. <laughs> That's not cheese. Hold on a minute. No. Mm, no, it's no, not it like cheese. No, that, that's not cheese. No. This is an analogy. But you go into Sainsbury's and you see cheese, and it costs a certain amount of money, but then next to it there's Taste the Difference cheese, and it's a little bit more expensive, but it tastes really nice. He, the bachelor life. No, but what, <laughs> no, but what I want to know is why don't they just make all the cheese like that? Or do they just make that cheese and then make some that's a bit worse, price it lower and say, here's some rubbish cheese for poor people? <laughs> I'm confused, so why is... Why are you on this programme? <laughs> I'm right, aren't I? It is like... Why would you deliberately make the cheese less good than you could make? It's the bloody Ferrari! It's not the cheese! They've deliberately made the F430 less good than they know it can be, so they then bring out a more expensive one and put Taste the Difference on it and sell it in Sainsbury's. Well, they don't actually do that. No, you, know you confuse mean? yourself, you poor old goat! <laughs> is it...? Sorry... Uh, uh, right. listen, I'm moving it on. James has plainly gone quite mad. So they were impressed by the seat heater, but as for the space, well, it was two in the back, one in the front, just like in an ordinary hatchback. I did get an interesting tip, though. Some uh, <laughs> Colston Bassett Stilton. That's very nice, thank Some you. Cashel Blue. At the next repair halt, Richard and I decided to show James what a real problem might be like. Ooh! Would you like the mature? I'm thinking extra mature. Uh, well, I've got one of each. Yeah, that's brilliant. <laughs> That's going to smell poor. <laughs> Cover his van. It's actually just a huge cheese grater. He's coming, he's coming. Quick, quick. What? Hands off car. Oops, Please. Sorry. How fast were you going? When you I, got, I strayed slightly you over stray. the speed limit there, and I was caught, and they dealt with me efficiently and courteously, as befits a civilised nation, which is, of course, what France is. No. France is a country you have to drive through to get to Italy. That's all it's for. <laughs> all right? He's not going to like it. It's, look, the no. fact of the matter is, they've got better cheese, they've got better no, wine, they they've got better... They, have. Got they better... haven't got better cheese. They are a bunch of treacherous, lamb-burning, workshy peasants. <laughs> all right? It can't be that difficult for a solution. They need to design, like, a liquid, yeah, that you just pour in to potholes everywhere, and then it sets, so it's self-level, and it would set hard. Why there could you, you not that, do that? that? Would work. It is a brilliant idea. Thank you, it's mine. So, so there it's, we it's, are. It's, it's available. It's, it's that... My cheese sauce. What? James, <laughs> 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 no, you know I said that we'd got more mature in this series. You've gone straight to dementia. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Cheese sauce. When, you, when I make cheese sauce, I, I always make too much, like everybody does, so there's like a quarter of an inch in the bottom of the pan, and when you get up the next day, that bit is so hard, you either throw the pan away or you treat that as the new bottom of the pan. <laughs> <laughs> so if you put that in the hole, cheese sauce. Jobs your uncle. 
<laughs> well, we solved it. Job done. <laughs> well, we solved the cocktail problem. You're glad we're problem. back. Oh, God. Well, how has the world I managed without know. us for the last few uh, months? <laughs> First of all, would you permit me to chisel some of the cheddar that has grown in my underpants away? Well, not here. Having de-cheesed my body parts, we headed out to get the necessary supplies. God, Florida's awful. Nasty insects, old people, fat people, a lot of people who all offer you cheese. You want cheese with that? You want cheese with that? And then shoot you. Which of these words can be typed on a single row of a standard UK QWERTY keyboard? Cheese. <laughs> it, is, it is interesting because they, they can't do food, the Mexicans, can they? Because it's all like sick with cheese on it. I mean, that, <laughs> refried sick. Yeah, refried <laughs> sick. Charles oh, left in it. I brought you some presents. What's coming into it. I've got you steak and cheese biscuit. What? And I brought you a fan. Really? Yeah. We've That's got fans. fantastic. Mate. How do you feel now? Yeah, air oh, con. There actually... it is. <laughs> See what I've got? Ham and cheese, yes. yes. Dundee, ham and cheese, I'll read you the ingredients, blah, 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 blah. And imitation American cheese. So it's the only thing that hasn't actually got any cheese on it. Yes. <laughs> With our farming back on schedule, we could afford to have a spot of lunch. And that sparked one of the great debates of the countryside. Never mind that. What is in a ploughman's? Cheese. cheese. It's always cheese. It's cheddar. Ched, ched, yes. yes. Still, no, it could or be still Stilton. Stilton. No, you can't have... No, I can't stand ploughmans with Ponzi cheese. Yeah. How can you call Plowman Stilton Ponzi? Have Stilton. Stilton. No, that's the least Ponzi cheese in the we world. Ponzi cheese is stale bread, hard cheddar and a pickle of some sort. That's all they'd have had. Apple. Farm, only in season. And the apple, an apple season tree. coincides with the ploughing season, you pillock. Pickled onions. Yes. Yes. Branston pickle. Yes. Apple. An apple. Cheese. Cheese, Cheddar get both Stilton. sorts, I don't right, want to okay. have another round with him. Lettuce. No. no. Lettuce. Eventually, we made a decision and Hammond was nominated to go off and buy our lunch. Today, we are still in the 1970s and the great question that we are addressing on this occasion is cheese versus cheese. So, in the 1970s, there were only three types of cheese available as far as I know. One of them was cheddar, that's this one here. The other one was red Leicester. The third one, which we're not featuring, was pre-grated Parmesan in a small blue pot that smelled of sick. And it wasn't until much later in life when I ate a real piece of Parmesan that you broke away from a block that had been cut from a true wheel that I realized Parmesan didn't taste like a baby had vomited on your food. But anyway, we'll stick with the ones we had. These are cheese. They are not shade grown, they're not lying caught, they're not oak aged, they're not free trade, they are just cheese. Morning. And he's brought a piece of cheese. Whoa. Oh look at that. That is fantastic. And lastly, grated Parmigiano Reggiano Cheesiano. You can use a normal you know, strokey up and down cheese grater. I'm just obsessed with this mooly thing because I've had it since I was a student and it's outlived many relationships, cars, jobs, people even. It's actually time, time the mooly grater had a service as well. I have dismantled it and rebuilt it several times over its life and it's due another one, you can tell, because that pin is wearing out. Can you see how it's starting to twist? As I grate, that's a sign that I need to strip it and rebore it. That's okay, it's only a two or three day job. When you've finished, remove the drum, there's your treat. You see, down in there, the little bit that goes under the wheel doesn't make it through the center. That is yours. I don't want to go around this corner fast. I want to go home and make love and make cheese. That's what I like doing most of all, because I'm French. That's a cheese head screw, parallel sided. It's got like a, a wheel of cheese shape on the top. And that hole there is quite clearly made to accommodate that. So that's, that's a bit of a clue to start with. And you then make sure the lunch goes on for a very long time. You have a starter, 
and main course. So turn it into candles for three days, got into port. Pudding, cheese, well, when I say reverse, careered backwards. Mints, more cheese, shame to waste the bottle. And then afterwards, you take them to another car park, which contains, miraculously, the other 200 cars. Rivals from Europe and Japan, it's turned into a sort of luxury statement of belief. But at its heart, it remains resolutely American. It's American like a five-egg omelette with cheese and extra cheese and a strawberry on top. In here, with the back seats folded down, I have been able to fit a massive 60 cubic feet of cheese. So if you're in the cheese-making industry, this is a very practical and impressive car. Now, because the Mercedes is lower, obviously you get less space in the back, but you'd be surprised how close it is. I've actually got 57 cubic feet of cheese in there. And if you convert cheese into dogs, that's 4.3 Great Danes. And what's more, if I push this button here, the whole floor slides out. So if this cheddar were a dog, it would be able to get in and out more easily. That is just a fish lightly killed and then put in a bag. And the marvellous thing is, is that Richard Hammond won't be able to enjoy any of this because he won't eat anything unless it's come from a burger van on the A38. But I'd like cheese, it's full of bacteria in it. I'd like fish. Right, now there is an organisation called the New Economic Foundation which has said that all 4x4 vehicles should come with a health warning, like yeah. a box of cigarettes. We've got a picture. 4x4s make you impotent, <laughs> whatever. Um, they're saying that by 2020, the 4x4 vehicle will be the third biggest killer of the planet. I'm getting fed up with this. It's every week there's a third biggest killer. Smacking children, that's mm. going to be the third big. <laughs> Passive smoking, third big. Cheese. Yeah. Cheese now has to have... Kill yourself with cheese, it's not even sharp. I don't... Well, it's <laughs> They say cheese has to have a government health warning. Have you seen that? A orange sticker on it? And then, no, what was the other one the other day? We can't have sex in case we catch clematis. Yes. Yeah. We <laughs> can't have... <laughs> whatever it is, <laughs> yeah? They're just a bunch of mealy-mouthed, bitter and twisted failures whose lives haven't worked out as well as they were hoping. Nobody's going to sleep with them because they've got such ugly beards, and they just reckon that we can't have fun either. Oh, mate, it's good to have your back, actually. <laughs> Great, yeah, but you, Hammond, you would say that because you're an American. Not you an American! <laughs> oh, no, 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 I'm not! Hammond, you what, you've got a Stetson, you've got cowboy boots, you've got chaps, you've got a Harley Davidson, you've got a Mustang, you'd like to get a beer, and you put cheese on everything. I, I don't! <laughs> I'm not American! You have made a living out of being an American. Your Saturday I, night programme is a fat man falling off some foam rubber. <laughs> All right! Hey, we'll watch that! <laughs> and they turn up... They turn up in their millions! <laughs> Car. I think they're going to have a problem with that. Uh, we've had this mystery fax, OK? Came to the office, some telephone numbers and a picture. Yes. What would you say that was? It's a Lotus Esprit. Yeah, it's a Lotus Esprit. Anybody else? Lotus what is that? Esprit? Yeah. Now, this has actually come from the manufacturer. When from you ring, Lotus? From Lotus. When you ring the number, they will say to you, What's that picture that's come through on your fax machine? And you'll say, oh, that's the Lotus Esprit. And the reason they're doing that is because they want to prove that this is their shape and then copyright it. How can they do that? You well, I don't, well, we can ensure they don't, OK? If you get one of these on your fax machine, ring the number, and when they say, what's that picture, you say, that's a piece of double Gloucester. <laughs> <laughs> that way, every time somebody buys a Ferrari or a Lotus or what was the other a one? A Lamborghini or indeed a Seat, if they ever get around to building this thing, it's more money in royalties for Britain's beleaguered cheesemakers. Nice. Good news Ooh, for you, Good point. Yeah. Good point. This isn't frightening at all, and that's because it's as square as Sophie Alice Baxter's head. The square simply isn't a frightening shape. Square is not a frightening concept. A house, square, not scary. Cheese, square, not scary. And then there's this place. 0 to 60 takes 13 and a half seconds, and the top speed is just 99. 
As a result, you couldn't even use it as a milk float, because by the time you got to the end of your round, you'd be delivering cheese. I'd love to have been in the party when they were discussing it. Shut up, you goddamn frenzy, cheese-eating surrender monkey. Poor bloke, when he walked in that room, it's yeah. going to be very exciting. I'm a judge, and they were there drinking petrol and supercharging their chest. <laughs> Shelby would be going, I don't know what a hybrid is. It's like country and western. <laughs> <laughs> it's smooth. Once the sauce starts to thicken, it's time to think about cheese. There's one thing I can't stand. It's a wishy-washy, namby-pamby, left-wing cheese sauce. <laughs> I want it thick and British. Peasantine and lumpen, not lumpy. Let's, um... Are these little black bits part of the mouli? No. Those little black bits are part of the vanilla pod from the custard we made earlier. It's in a different <laughs> show. Ignoring this slight hiccup, we plough on. I think the best thing to do with this is make it form into a bit of a dome in the middle. Then so we the can cheese sort of... runs down the sides. Yeah, exactly. So it could be like a cheese volcano almost. Let us anoint it with cheese. <laughs> Cheesy. This, it's called the Autonomobile. Yeah. <laughs> I can tell you like it, I can tell that. Um, now, you'll notice there's no steering wheel or brakes or any controls in here at all for you to operate. It's the automobile. It does itself. Yes. You see? It's very clever. You yeah. get in it, you tell it where you want to go, and then it says, I'm going to make sure I get this right, they say you sit back, enjoy the view with a nice wine, cheese and a baguette. Oh, lovely. <laughs> No, I think this is a brilliant idea. I genuinely like the idea of sitting back with a glass of wine, some cheese, OK, and going home. However, there is one problem with a sort of laser-guided, radar-guided, satellite-guided car. This has been invented by a brilliant man, but five years down the line, it's going to be bought by someone called Keith. And <laughs> Keith is going to wake up one day and think he can service it himself. Yes. Which means you won't be able to relax in your, what's it called, automobile. Yes. Because you'll be sitting there thinking, I know that somebody called Keith reading the Daily Star and watching EastEnders is coming the other way. 